In this next video, I'm going to be making an assembly file. Um, an assembly file is where we have several parts and we put them together and we make some kind of, uh, you know, some kind of an assembly. If you're watching this video, you probably already know how to make parts. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to take it to the next step. We're going to put the parts together and like I said, that's called an assembly file. So first of all, um, let's talk about the project. This is called a pegboard toy. Um, what we got here is a uh, series of pegs, you know, square peg, triangle peg, and circle peg. These are all parts that I created, and I put them together um, using um, a series of constraints, which we're going to talk about in just a moment. First of all, let's take a look at the parts. Um, I made the, I made an end piece, the actual peg board, the round peg, square peg, and a triangle peg. And this is going to be sort of the finished product where we have, um, you know, all these pegs together um, in one where they, where they work, um, you know, functionally. So the first thing we need to do is to um, create a new assembly. And in assembly, um, this is sort of our blank canvas here. There's a few buttons that we press, you know, quite a bit. The first one is going to be place. Um, this button up here is where is what we'll click on to bring in those part files that we created. The second one that we're going to be pressing, which isn't highlighted right now, is called constrain. And what constrain will do is it, it will allow pieces to um, come together, to touch, to uh, move um, in certain ways. So these two buttons we're going to use quite a bit. First of all, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to press place here, and that will allow me to browse my computer and find the files that I'm about to um, import. And here are the, um, here's my pegboard toy folder. I'm going to open that up. And here are all the files that I created. My triangle, square, round peg. It's all back together here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down the control button and I'm going to click on end pegboard, uh, the round peg, square peg. I'm going to bring all these in at the same time. And I'm just going to press open and I've, I've moved these files around so I'll get these error messages. And notice that I can press, I, I can take these and I can put, I can place these in multiple times just by pressing uh, the left click button. Um, but what I'm going to do now is just press escape. So here's all my pieces uh, sort of randomly um, spaced. And you notice that some of them move but some of them don't. Like this, this uh, triangle peg doesn't move here. We just need to right click on it and we go to grounded. So if you ever want a, a part to be fixed, to be static, just right click on it and put it to grounded. Right now I know right away that this pegboard here, I don't want that to move. So I'm going to ground that right off the bat. All right, so let's go ahead and start putting these pieces into here. It's a little bit um, tricky at first, but once you get the hang of it, it's, it's not bad at all. So I'm going to start off with the easiest one, which is this circle peg. To do it, Here's that constraint button. I'm going to click on the constraint button, and we, now we just need to tell it what spaces or what what parts of this of this circle do we want to have touching this hole. So to do it, we're going to we're going to line up the center point of this of this dowel of this circular peg. I'm going to click on it. The dotted line signifies it, that it's the center of the circle. And we're going to have this dotted line. We're going to constrain that to the center of this hole. And there again, you can see the, the um, dashed line. And when you click it, you just press Apply. And I'm going to actually press Cancel here. And you can tell that now it, it works. You know, and it can spin in there. It looks really good. Let's go ahead and try the square. So I, cl I click on the Constrain button. And now I'm just basically clicking on the sides that are going to be touching. So first of all, I want this side to be touching this side. Press Apply. And I always press Cancel here. Because right now, with a four-sided object, we actually have to do a series of two constraints. So I'm just going to move this over to the side. Press Constrain. And now let's go ahead and constrain this side. I'm basically just constraining two other sides that are going to be touching and OK. And now that moves through there perfectly. The tricky one here I found is the triangle. 
So when looking at it, we can tell that I want the, my, the base of my triangle here, the whole surface, is going to be constrained against this surface right here. I press apply. Cancel. I'm just going to kind of move it to the side. And I'm also going to be placing a constraint between this, this side of the triangle and that side of the peg. I'm going to press OK and let's test it out and that works really good. And a good test to do is just to go at it right from the top view and you can tell that there's no gaps because sometimes what happens is the pegs will be too big or too small and they won't fit in perfectly with those holes. So that's the end of part two of this, or part one of this video. In part two I'm going to be adding on the sides.